Kim Underwood, State of the U, joining us uh, just in time to uh, preview Miami's first big game of the season, taking on Duke, of course, the ACC opener uh, for the Canes with uh, Duke. Uh, a couple big wins under their belt. When you look at Northwestern, they completely throttled the Wildcats and took out North Carolina by a field goal last week. Uh, we haven't spoken, Cam, since Malik Rocher was named the starting quarterback, and obviously he's got two games under his belt one against a totally overmatched opponent. The the next one, we knew this would be a sneaky, decent matchup against Toledo, one that would provide some challenge and adversity at some point, and it did. Uh, your thoughts about uh, Rocher's play? First half, Malik Rozier is or has been bad, and I don't really think there's any two ways about that. In both games, you're just leaving a lot to be desired um, from accuracy, um, you know, from just missing guys down the field. Um, there was a, a, a play in the Boone cookman game where uh, somebody was just, I mean, there was a couple plays where people were wide open and he didn't even look that way. Um, and that's a thing. But second half, Malik Rozier has been an All-American caliber player. And it's crazy because in the first half, you know, when we spoke over the summer, Mark Rick spoke about Malik Rozier trying to make a big play and going outside of the, you know, the, the framework of the offense. So if something broke down, now I'm going to scramble, I'm going to do whatever. And Mark Richter wanting Malik Rozier not to do that. And you can see on the field, Rozier wanting to be the old version of himself where he would do those kind of things. And you see him just go, oh, wait, wait, no, can't do that. And in the first halves, it's been check down Charlie, like one read or half a read. And then I'm throwing it to the, flat or to the swing route to the running back like I'm just I'm not even gonna sit there and look at anything because I don't want to press the issue even to wait for my second and third read because I don't want coach to bench me um so he'll just you know look look, look you know check down check down check down check down which is very frustrating especially when you're finally calling decent plays to get guys open and in the second half he's just a completely different player I mean, if you watch the second half of that Bethune Cookman game, Miami came out, zip, zap, zoom, touchdown, zip, zap, zoom, touchdown. Same thing against Toledo. And it's mind boggling to me that it's the same guy who's playing so disparately in halves of games. And that leads me to believe two things. One, it's maybe a lack of confidence in the play calls or something for on the Rozier side. And secondly, I just don't think that Mark Rick is really – calling plays until he gets halftime adjustments in there and if we're 15 16 games into his tenure here which means 15 16 games of him calling plays i don't want to continue to see this kind of a thing i don't want it to be where we're waiting into second halves to see the offense come alive or things in the passing game open up because everybody knows that mark walton is the franchise everybody knows that mark walton is the centerpiece of this offense so they're going to load up against the run which means that this week against Duke, we're going to have to pass the ball to open up running games or running lanes, I should say. You know, Georgia Tech, Florida State, which is, you know, I skipped over them, but they're not this week, but next week and like very close in the future. We're not going to be able to just hand the ball off three yards in a, in a cloud of dust. And the, the pairing of the apparent lack of confidence from Rozier and the lack of a cohesive game plan and, and uh, play calls from Rick in the first halves of games is something that gives me pause because we cannot afford to have slow starts all year long. Um, as we go into ACC play and you're going on these road games, this is a, I know it's not the toughest schedule in the world. It's not the schedule from two years ago when we had Florida state and Clemson and, 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 but these are college football teams also, and they have scholarship players as well. And if you spot them, a touchdown, two, three touchdowns in the first half, now you're just making it more and more difficult to climb uphill. And I don't want to see that. So, uh, you know, I think the, the pairing of quarterback and coach needs to step up. But if we see the second half version of both Malik Rozier as quarterback and Mark Richter's play caller, if we see the second half versions of them from the Toledo game and the Bethune cookman game throughout the rest of the season, I think we'll be in a good spot. So for me, uh, and I'm openly somebody who did not want Malik Rozier to start. I wanted Nikosi Perry, and that did not come to pass. So I am a tough critic. But um, the first, yeah, he's he's been solid to me. He's been, you know, maybe a B, B plus, um, you know, especially with the second half of that Toledo game. He was dealing. Like, he was 
absolutely on fire, like NBA Jam on fire. Um, but I want to see more of that on, on a consistent basis. So not the random, oh, hey, wow, you finally hit a deep pass to Daryl Langham. I want to see things on a more consistent basis. And I know people are going to look at his statistics and then come back at me with that and say, well, the numbers are great. And blah, blah, blah. yeah, they were. But, you know, when you're going 11 for 13 and basically all checkdowns in the first half, that's it's like great inflation. Like, yeah, the numbers look nice, but they're empty calories. So, uh, yeah, Malik Rozier has been good. I want to see that continue. And the second half, Rozier, that's the one that I want to see every time out. 